All right, so in today's video, I wanna talk about color grading the Air 2S footage, specifically in D-Log. Now, I haven't done a color grading tutorial on this. I've talked a little bit about this, but I haven't done anything sort of formal. So in today's video, I wanna show you how I get the look that I get out of this footage. And honestly, all I'm doing is using a Fuji LUT. There will be a link in the description below for you to check that out, but let's get started. All right, so thanks for sticking around. And first and foremost, if this is your first time here, I do tips, tricks, tutorials just like this pretty often, or I used to do it pretty often. I need to do it a little bit more. But today we're talking about the Air 2S footage and how to get cinematic footage out of it. I was asked several times in the comments of my cinematic video how I achieved the look, where I got those lots from. So in this video, I thought I would do more of a formal tutorial. I did this on a live stream, but sometimes live streams really can't convey all the details you need to be able to achieve the same or similar look. So the LUTs I use are Fuji LUTs. They're for F-Log footage. F-Log is Fuji's log footage, but what I found is those same LUTs work really well on Panasonic footage and work really, really well on Mavic Air 2S footage. So I'm gonna show you how I got the sort of styling that I did out of the clips that I shot when I was in Colorado. All right, let's jump into Premiere Pro. All right, so you can use any sort of editing software that you want. I just choose to use Premiere Pro. The first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and create an adjustment layer. And I'm gonna just take that adjustment layer, set it on top of my footage, and then drag it and drop it on top of my clips. I'm then going to slice the adjustment layer up so it's evenly spread across each individual clip. This is going to allow me to adjust the color for each clip without destroying each clip. So if I don't like something, I just delete the adjustment layer and leave the clip there. All right, first thing I wanna do is go to the input look. You'll notice that you have input look and you also have the creative tab. A lot of people like to use the creative tab because it lets you dial back the intensity of the allot. But with these technical LUTs from Fuji, you don't have to dial back the intensity. They're absolutely perfect straight out of the gate. All these clips were shot in automatic, 5K, 30 frames per second, automatic, no ND filters, by the way. Let's go ahead and go to browse. That's gonna take me to my folder where I house my XT4 Fuji LUTs. These are directly from Fuji. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this first clip here, which is a Fuji to Eterna, and that's Rec 709 Eterna LUT. I'm gonna grab that, drop it in there, and you'll see it's made a dramatic difference straight out of the gate, before, after, before, after. There are some things we do have to fix. I'm gonna show you how to fix those right now. So for the absolute basics, just grab your shadow slider, bring up your shadows just slightly, just enough to bring back some of that detail. If you're watching, I have my Lumetri scopes open. This is gonna tell me whether or not things are clipping or things are bottomed out. What you don't wanna have happen is where this top line is all the way at 100, where the line is really super flat. And you don't wanna have this bottom line at zero where it's all the way crushed and just a flat line at zero. So you want it somewhere in the middle or evenly spread out. You can see before everything was sort of in the middle, super e evenly exposed. And I think the Air 2S automatic exposure does a great job. So as soon as we enable the LUT, it spreads all that data out and gets you a nice even waveform. Something we can do a little bit further is bring down the highlights a little bit, and this is just gonna give me a little bit more detail in the shadows. And if you wanna add a little bit more saturation, this is really gonna be something that is personal preference. I'll just add like 110, just like that, just to give it a little bit of a pop. But other than that, I call that clip done. That was easy, didn't take any time at all to do that. It took more time explaining than I did color grading. Let's go to clip number two. Clip number two is a little bit sunnier, much more cheery day. And I'm gonna go again to my browse, go to find my LUT that I wanna use. Let's use the uh, WDR LUT, that stands for Wide Dynamic Range. So Wide Dynamic Range is gonna evenly balance out the shadows and the highlights. And I still find myself needing to give a little bit more oomph to the shadows, not a lot, just a little. And I do wanna go ahead and increase the overall warmth of this image. So I'm just gonna add like 15 to the warmth. This is personal taste. I like a little bit warmer of an image, especially something like this. That's up to you. But right here, I would probably call this done. Maybe pull down the highlights just a tad, just like that. And I think that looks pretty good. Let's look at before, after. If you wanna go ahead and add a little bit of saturation, you can. 
Again, uh, about 110 is probably all I would do. Again, these Fuji lots are all inclusive. You really don't need to add much to it. So we'll call that clip done. Let's move on to the last clip here, which is me chasing Sean's truck. And this clip here, we're gonna try the bleach bypass lot from Fuji. Now, this is a very stylistic look. It's the Eterna to be bleach bypass. Gosh, that's a tongue twister. I'm gonna go ahead and choose that. And this is not everybody's cup of tea. You can see it really, really crushed the blacks. You can see it right here. It's sort of uh, it's sort of crushed right here. So what we need to do is bring some of the shadow detail back. I'm just gonna drag the shadows up while also bringing the highlights down. It's also a very contrasty LUT, so I can go ahead and knock the contrast back ever so slightly. And then again, we'll bump it up to about 110. And honestly, that looks really good. If I just shut it on off, on off, it gives a very unique look. It, it's sort of more of a serious vibe, um, but those are three different looks. You can interchange them. Now, are these LUTs going to fit every single person's cup of tea? Probably not. Everybody's gonna have their own personal preference. Some people just really do like that Rec 709, but want the maximum dynamic range. And if you want that, I would just use the standard Fuji LUT. I'll leave some example clips of these color graded at the end of the video so you can sort of see. I'll also include these three clips, specifically the raw clips themselves. If you wanna download and test them, there will be a Google Drive link if you're curious. Again, all this was shot in automatic and I'm just super impressed. Really happy with this drone so far. All right, that's gonna do it. If you uh, like this video, be sure to go ahead and uh, let me know in the comments if you wanna see more tutorials similar to this. Link for the LUTs in the description. And um, there you go, hope you guys enjoyed. I gotta get back on these tutorials, so I'll, I'll start doing more. I've actually, I've had a few drinks, so I always, I'm always good when it comes to doing tutorials when I'm drinking, so. I'm not an alcoholic, it's, it's fine. God, that just incriminated myself. Stay original.